ray of hope comes from me. Let's start with a If you go back 30 years ago, this place was basically a wasteland. Nothing. This would have been brown, like Brene says, like the palm of your hand, you know? There was nothing here, anywhere around here. People say here, you don't get say on pocket bagai. So a, a tree is, is a lot of things. We, we know these things and we take them for granted, I think, other places. Haiti gets this reputation, it's always Haiti the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. Um, but the history really goes back to particularly brutal French colonization and stripping of the hardwoods to create sugar plantations. They've never been able to recover in terms of the land and viability of farming since the um, French occupation. So as a result, um, the land was stripped and folks have been eking out an existence in the rural area since. The founder of the organization was sailing around Haiti and found that his navigational maps didn't quite match the landscape. And that was because so much erosion happened every time there was a major rainfall. He came up with the idea of watershed intervention, if you will, and uh, that obviously has to start with anchoring the soil and that leads you to trees. The whole intent is to help them move towards self-sufficiency, which means they have to be able to take initiative ultimately and to own what goes on and to expand it themselves. Yes, he lead on top with them pull that pull no lam well fair magia machi. As he lead on top with him pull that pull no lam well fair magia machi. Say who mache, say who kiwe. Working in another culture requires first a huge amount of trust building and then a huge amount of activity together and shared time. And there's also a great deal of learning together about what works. CODEP actually stands for Cooperative Development Project. The, the principal vision is to take barren land and reforest it to restore the land, to restore rural life. That, is my understanding, was the vision from day one and continues to be our vision today. See, that's a tiny little tree. They start in a smaller bag. And then it'll graduate into a larger bag, like over here. We helped CODEP with basic supplies like the plastic bags into which they plant a seed with a little bit of soil, and some picks and some shovels and some very basic things. They have created 41 nurseries, and they are quite amazing uh, in harvesting seeds. We don't supply them seeds. They supply their own seeds. So this here is a great example of deforestation. An NGO came in, leveled the top of the mountain. They were going to put a school up there. The rains came. There was no trees to support this mountainside, and the whole mountainside washed away. When you talk about restoring the forest, you, you have to think in terms of how many decades, how many hundreds of years it, it's going to take to recover from what has been done. Mango trees, mango trees, all these trees are codef trees that were planted. It's a working forest. It's not a preservation forest, it's a working forest. And there's a big difference, you know? We try to be able to cut down trees and create lumber and have an income for the families, but then we go back and plant. And the rule of thumb is, is that if you cut down a tree, you plant 
four or five trees within a five foot radius of that tree. So as much as we're harvesting trees, we're reforesting with trees at the same time. Kodap has long had the attitude of being pretty low profile um, with slow, sustainable growth. And I understand that because of a history of failed projects in the country and, um, and chaos <laughs> on the edges. So uh, the fact that it's been going solidly for 30 years with steady growth, I think is an incredibly impressive story anywhere in the world, but particularly in Haiti. Today is a 30-year celebration of what CODEP has been and hopefully what CODEP will be. CODEP on peel on peel bon moon. Le moins garde on peel différence en Haiti. Garde bois, on It's a glory for everybody here. When they walk and they see people come to celebrate with them, like to see what they do, it's everybody's happy, everybody's enjoy. Bon, my vision is very large for Codep. Yeah, my vision is huge. It's not only to plant trees, it's also to have people understand what Codep means. We've got reduced erosion, we've got more water going, infiltrating into the soil, which means there's more water coming out in the springs, and people get their water from springs here. So this is, this is really important. People aren't opening up a faucet and getting their water. In, in terms of water, this CODEP program has been fabulous. This is a demonstration forest for CODEP planted 27 years ago. On this side, you're gonna see a densely populated forest. Um, it started out with vetiver grass, eucalyptus, and then they came back in over the course of time, planted hardwoods, more towards the center, and the fruit trees are on the perimeter of the forest. On this side, this is the demonstration part of it, where they came in, they planted eucalyptus trees, initially with vetiver grass and eucalyptus, and didn't come back and plant hardwoods. The advantage to this side is, is that there's farming. You'll see there's all kinds of uh, beans planted and corn all throughout the, the, the land here. Both areas are equally as important. This is a long-term investment. This is a short-term investment. So, so from a farming and a reforestation standpoint, that's more important for reforestation. This is more important for sustainability on daily life. We needed to find a way in which we could help them see the long-term goals of it. And now that they do have the forests and the birds returning and the forests are regenerating themselves, they don't have to sort of be convinced of something, they can see it. One thing that's really interesting and really important with CODEP is that it's the people here who are doing the work. Definitely they get a hand from people in the north, but it's the people here who are doing the work and who are providing the inspiration for other people to plant trees. She has been working for CODEP for 24 years. And the reason she get involved in CODEP because she fall in love with this forest station and planting trees. She said she has over a million trees. There's a, just a huge amount of educational opportunity and need. So finding a way to help with that, uh, not just being told what's needed, but coming down and helping find out and suggesting ways. 
While reforestation remains our priority focus, they have also built a school for kids, and we now have a first through 12th grade school where local children can go and graduate with honors and go on to do bigger and better things. What differentiates our school is we also teach them about reforestation. Our kids look trees differently because in Kodep school, they teach every, every one of them how to grow a tree, what the tree means, and many things those people, those kids can do better for Haiti. I remember meeting one woman who's been involved for a long time, and she said, I love the trees. These are my trees. And she said, because of these trees, I have some income, and I can send my children to school and her life is being restored. Because of the trees, we can breathe better. Because of the trees, you can get water. Because of the trees, the rain fall down. His dream is to leave the tree for his children. I say thanks to God. Thank you to Kodep. I ask God to always protect Kodep. To me, uh, the most profound way in which Haitians have been changed is that they have created something of value that they now want control of. That they have taken this project and made it theirs. This is this gem of a project, and it is worth telling people about how it works. It produces results, and they can start to dream. It is my now pleasure to welcome Executive Director of the Haiti Reforestation Partnership, Michael Anella. Hello, Michael. Hello, Tasha. Thank you so much for having us here with you today. Oh, it's an absolute honor. Uh, we only have a short little time together, but I would like to ask you something that I think that is a, a big challenge for Haiti. There's a lot of really wonderful projects, well-intentioned, but unfortunately fail in Haiti. Why do you think your project has been so successful? I think it's the sense of community. Many of the people that work on the mountain have lived there for many years. The project has been going on now for 30 years. People have seen a change in both nutrition, the soil quality, the water quality, and the sense of community really holds it together. Um, we've had people who are coming from various backgrounds. Um, they get a little bit of money for the work that they're doing, and we really see that the benefits are within the community itself. Many of the women who work say these trees are their children and they have to nurture them so they grow. That's beautiful. It's uh, really clearly you're balancing some immediate needs with your longer term goals. And that seems like part of the real way that you're paving a way for success. 
um, for yourself, just individually, what is it that you feel like helps you to feel optimistic that continue to go to work and try to do something that's really is quite a challenge? I think for myself, and I'll be very short, um, I believe that it's the sense of community, the love of the people, the love of the land, but more importantly, um, it touches my spirit. And when my spirit is involved in something, I really feel like I'm doing something worthwhile for both myself and the environment. Well, I really appreciate you spending some time with us and um, we appreciate not only you, but the really the work that you are doing in Haiti.